Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your magical moon message. This is the Peace Dealer, Moon in Gemini, Sun in Capricorn. Uh, because the Sun is two degrees, right? The first 10 days of this transit, basically the next eight days of this transit, uh, a lot of the phases of the transit occur at the beginning of the zodiac sign, all in the first decade. Um, the 150 degree angle that represents the opening King Kunx from the moon two degrees Gemini to the sun two degrees Capricorn uh, prepares us 30 degrees to 180 degrees of the full moon where we harvest this transit, okay? Um, once again, the full moon, actually for me, this hits pretty home because uh, I'm a progressed cancer sun. So when you go through full moons and progress charts, the moon in your progress chart moves a degree every month, okay? Uh, I'm coming off of that cycle is around that time when that happened was when I had my progress full moon in Capricorn. I started working with a Capricorn who used to manage Astrolata. And it's the first year I ever made six figures doing what I do. And I didn't need to work a job. So like that was through the progress chart, a much slower phase of experiencing this. It could be very easy to miss under your nose how these transits uh, play out. You know what I mean? Like, you don't really think about the rain and psychic properties. Uh, it's easily, it's very easy for mentalist shenaniganery to be employed in astrology. You'll see some of your favorite astrologers play with it, you know, because this could still be a form of entertainment, but those who rely on it as a mechanic versus those who fall back on actual science and may use that just to spice things up is what's going to be a lot more evident moving forward uh just as you know this gets a lot more saturated and um is just something to once again keep in mind because for example a lot of what i'm really explaining right now is the mathematics between the moon's 150 degree phase with the sun on route to be 180. So that's not really that much different than the meteorologist telling you, hey, these are the weather patterns. It might rain today, you know what I mean? I'm going to share the interpretation objectively and then subjectively for me as far as what that language between the moon and sun is but that has nothing to do with what's going to happen to you if i were to make any claims personally or to just say oh this is happening in the sky so you're going to meet a boyfriend or a girlfriend today i'm lying to you i'm, I'm being a fraud okay so just that's why i always say you know everything i'm telling you take with a grain of salt this is for you to edit you may not agree with everything I'm saying. You may not like what I'm saying. Take whatever I'm saying and make it work for you, okay? Because if the meteorologist tells you that it's raining today, um, the rain isn't going to make you single or not. You feel me? Like, that's something to keep in mind. A lot of questions I get asked are, oh, can this happen during this transit? Or is this transit the reason why this is happening to me? And you have to understand that that's kind of like asking, oh, it's raining outside. Is that the reason why my ex cheated on me? And the reason why you see this is because your education system failed you and they do not make astrology an accredited course. You can't get licensing on astrology. Uh, unlike other fields like medicine and law. And so when you just push it into the box of psychic arts because it, it's fortune telly to you and, you know, you now put it in a field where you have cold readers 
psychics, frauds. This is going to, of course, intermingle it with people who also use these, you know, what's colloquially said to deceive people, even if they really think that. So, you know, something to keep in mind because Pluto and Aquarius over the next couple of decades is reawakening this new understanding of science, this understanding of science to make a lot of old uh, findings obsolete. For those of you who actually are doing the good work and spreading this wisdom to remind people that the word of God is the Maseroth. It is the Zodiac. Genesis 1, 15 and 16 and 14. Okay. Um, this is unavoidable. So as Neptune finishes out of Pisces, as Saturn is going direct, this is a massive disillusionment campaign. Apocalypse is really unveiling. So what's unveiling is this veil that has been cast over humanity for several centuries. And, you know, I'm glad to serve you as a part of this disillusionment process, the end of the world. By this time in two years, a lot of the religions, theoretical models of inconclusive scientific research, beliefs that have been shoved down your throat since adolescence or you've been made to believe, people not even going to be believing that anymore just in light of evidence and your own direct experience. Amen. Amen. All right. So that being said, um, once again, these transits, like when it's raining, they don't necessarily determine what happens to you. If it rains, you might decide to put on a fucking raincoat. Someone else may decide to not put on a raincoat. So just remember that there is a prophetic or predictive quality to these transits. Just like the meteorologist could be like, I think it's going to rain. It rained, but we don't call him a psychic. So just really keep that in mind because people who do try and do that, they're lying to you. There's a boundary between what someone is using as far as psychic ability versus this, which is a science. And you don't want to merge it because psychic ability does exist, but it is a lot of people don't know how to differentiate the objective mechanic behind the language that's happening as above so below versus you know people feeling and thinking some shit so just keep that in mind i'm saying that because venus is in scorpio venus opposing in the zodiac sign of scorpio not the constellation uranus in the zodiac sign of taurus is post 180 degrees of this harvest producing a transformation in your relationships it is producing unconventionality that you've spent the past six months sowing the seeds for. And as this gets ready to leave Scorpio, this is going to rapidly change the quality of the meaning of not just your relationships, but the way you interpersonally relate with other people. Post Mercury, Mars and the Sun, your consciousness and your desire finishing this harvest process. So what this may bring is very unconventional transformations in your relationships with other people, especially as Venus is getting ready to try Neptune. And as we come out of this harvest phase, will potentially put you in situations that can bring long felt wishes and dreams to be made true. Now, once again, that's just like me giving you the Zodiac weather. Does that mean that you're going to be in a relationship or not? That depends on you. You know, you could take advantage of a pattern like this and make bank or, you know, blame that for the reason why something bad is going wrong in your life. When you're a creator, you're an alchemist, you can use these patterns or not to transcend what you're currently working with or stick with these patterns, all right? So with that being said, Moon in Gemini is a Virgo signature from this Capricorn Sun, and it is integrating everything we've activated with the New Moon Sag and with the seeds that started to grow out the ground with the quarter square with the Moon in Pisces. Capricorn is applying this perspective up the mountain, the flood waters, as we are on our arc, are now raising up to mountain level. So. The understanding of this change of your ideology with the moon in Gemini, 150 to 180 degrees, is bringing together everything that you have perceived and activated relative to ascending your consciousness. And in this changing of your mind, it is integrating this understanding of your thoughts, this enlightened understanding of 
how to think about what? The sun in Capricorn and recent Mercury conjunction, your superpowers. This is integrating God level power in a way with which you can at a subatomic level or an auto nervous level automatically integrate everything you've learned so that by the time we come into the full moon, what are you harvesting? Power, cardinal signs. Okay. So because the moon is squaring Saturn and Pisces, because the moon in Gemini is squaring Neptune at the end of the transit, this is what's going to give you an intellectual understanding of conceptual and imaginary concepts conceptual conceptual and imaginary mechanics that are unseen which imagineer your reality this is the pipeline from the conjunction we have in pisces and taurus through our minds to program and understand the programming of how we're going to quite literally pull phenomena from our imagination and make it real fucking magic guys and this is beautiful because at this quality of integration this is quite literally taking what your brain has not been able to perceive because you can't see beyond one percent but you can still sense it yeah so even though the CIA has remote viewers that they've paid, the government can still, you know, push out this narrative that psychic abilities aren't real, even though they employ psychics, just like China, just like Russia. Tell me they don't have declassified documents. You could go to sleep if you want, but you're watching this. You're not asleep. So there is a very serious breakthrough here. And the quality of how with Pluto getting ready to go back into Aquarius, you are understanding intellectually, adding to your programming language and vocabulary, unseen metaphysical mechanics of the causality behind what you imagine and what happens for real. Because none of this bitch is separate. This, this, this experience is not local and real. And this is going to be you understanding your language. How? How? Do you use your God power? How do you tap into that collective power and express it individually? Because, I mean, you literally just transformed and ascended Scorpio and Sagittarius season. So it's amazing that we're starting to transit off integrating. And that's where the square to Pisces, right, which is a 90 degree angle to that Pisces. So the, this, this moon in Gemini is breaking those seeds you planted out the ground that a week ago we planted with the moon in Pisces, all right? This is what's going to further develop this arc ride, all right? And because the sun is giving you an awareness of physical, practical action, a whole lot of what was just conceptual, boom, you're, you're using that much more realistically and practically while Mercury is retrograded back into Sag with Mars. So the moon opposite this in Gemini will also match the meaning of the word with the actual word. This entire moon Gemini is a programming language integration from the higher part of your faculty beyond this reality to your intellectual understanding in this 3D. Be prepared for a lot of misconceptions around what you were told was impossible to be smashed off of the fact that you're making it possible, which is now an innovative quality of imagineering that is going to take on a real sense more than ever. So I hope you enjoy this integration process. It starts off squaring Saturn and it's going to end off squaring Neptune. This is going to really remind you that even though a lot of the progress you see in this world is illusory, a lot of what flashes in your face and looks like is, is a lot it isn't really a lot like think about how much this planet was destroyed in the name of innovation and technology for people wheeling this technology that don't even know the most basic of shit that our ancestors without any of this technology could easily figure out welcome to the end of the world and uh i hope this full moon will let you know this final boss battle is real psychic attack is real sleep zombie puppets who are letting false narratives control them are real and you get to slay them eviscerate and annihilate them so make sure you truly integrate everything you need to in preparation for this two-week boss battle i'll see you on the other side peace